neither. Oh, no. I have. Malola Lai, no my hare mai. Welcome to the third live chat in our skin series this week for Fano Afina Plunkett. Ko Waio, ko Kelly Toku Ingoa. Um, I'm a Plunkett nurse slash clinical leader and um, I've been working in Plunkett for 15 years. So I'm very excited to be part of the skin chat tonight. Um, tonight with me, I have Fa'asoa Apa'au, and she is a paediatric clinical nurse specialist from Starship Children's Health. Um, welcome, Fa'asoa. Thank you for being with us tonight. Would you like to tell us a bit about yourself? Oh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so, as you said, um, I'm a clinical nurse specialist at um, Starship Children's Health. Um, and I've been in that job for four years, but prior to that, I was a pediatric home care nurse in the community, visiting sick babies. So we used to see a lot of eczema as well as a lot of other things. I'm originally from Christchurch, um, born and bred, and that's where I did my training and have moved up here about 25 years ago. Oh, um, nice. I'm an eczema sufferer myself, um, and so this is this topic is quite dear to my heart. Yes. Because oh. I know that we can control it and we can make a difference in people's lives just by, um, yeah, doing the treatment that's prescribed. Yeah. Um, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. And it's always nice to have um, a professional who's also got that personal experience. So, you know, you've got the two lenses. Um, from having that information as well as living with it for yourself. Um, but before we get started, let's just recap from our last two lives. So what we did is we first up had Lydia Snell, who is a paediatric clinical nurse specialist, um, and she discussed eczema and moisturisers. Um, second up, we had Dr. Diana Purvis, and she discussed eczema and steroid use. Um, if you missed any of those chats, though, they are live. Um, um, those live chats are up on our Facebook page and they will be going up on our Plunkett website um, at a later date. Um, but tonight we'll be discussing bleach baths and top tips with Fa'asoa. Um, please get your questions in the chat and we will be able to um, ask these to Fa'asoa throughout our chat tonight and get some answers for you. So I will kick off with bleach baths. But I saw. Mm -hmm. Why why use bleach baths for eczema? So uh, we know that children with eczema, their skin barrier, people with eczema have a um, not a strong skin barrier, and so that skin barrier attracts bacteria. We all have bacteria on our skin. Every all humans do, but um, for some reason, children or people with eczema have a can have a higher level of bacteria especially when they've got uh, broken skin and, and poor skin, uh, skin barrier, the, there's a high there can be a high instance of infections um, and that can lead to inflammation and ongoing problems. So um, dilute bleach baths, we call it bleach baths, but it's actually dilute bleach baths because we dilute the bleach in the water and there's a special recipe for that that has been developed. Um, and that's just so that twice a week the skin can be completely cleaned uh, de to decrease the bacteria load that sort of sits on the skin um, and to allow the skin to um, to um, function a wee bit more strongly with less bacteria on the skin. Um, usually when um, people are, are diagnosed with eczema, they're, they're told to bathe with um, soap-free washes. Uh, children mostly are told to um, bathe with moisturisers. And they, they can hydrate the uh, sorry, moisturise the skin and stop it from drying out, but it doesn't necessarily completely clean the skin. So um, dilute bleach bath twice a week if someone's having a problem with recurrent infections or inflammation helps to decrease that bacteria load. Excellent. That sounds fantastic. So I think I jumped the gun a bit and I really should have just asked you, what is a bleach bath or what is a diluted bleach bath? What does it consist of? So a dilute bleach bath. So um, in the uh, New Zealand Eczema Network, we've developed a, a document and it, we've um, found that three bleaches that we recommend to use. And the reason we recommend those is because they have no fragrance or um, a detergent added to them. So those two products can be irritants. So it's 
purely an antiseptic. So we recommend using the three that are um, that we uh, on the on the on the pamphlet that we have. Um, and sorry, I've lost track of the question. It was just about the um, what was a bleach bath, and you were talking about the three different products that have been developed and designed for this. Yes, yep. and so each product has a certain um, percentage of bleach in it. So each one has a slightly different makeup. Um, but we, on the on the leaflet, we also have the how to make up for the different bleaches that are recommended on that leaflet. And those are the only three we we, can, we recommend. Um, often we hear that um, some uh, doctors say just to have a bleach bath, and parents go off and get Janola and stuff like that. But these are the ones we recommend in New Zealand at this stage. Um, and so, like I said, having a bleach bath a couple of times a week helps to decrease the bacteria load. But also, um, it's important to follow the, the aftercare. So after bathing for about 10 to 15 minutes, then we, uh, the skin needs to be rinsed with fresh water to take the bleach off the skin. And then that's the best time to apply your topical corticosteroids if that's what's needed. And then the moisturiser. But if the, you don't need the topical corticosteroids, then just moisturise straight after bath. Best time to put the creams on is when the skin is clean. Um, and hydrated because it means Excellent. it's good. yeah so when would you recommend like you've got um a mama or fano who have a child who has just been diagnosed with eczema and they've got the creams when would you suggest that they start having these bleach baths for their children um so my usually uh in my job i uh, families come and they've they've been using the topical steroids and the um and the moisturisers, um, but they're still finding that the flaring is happening often. So if you've got um, skin that you're applying the topical steroids to and the moisturiser, but it's still um, becoming inflamed, become quite, um, uh, is, is weeping, and um, then that's the best time to start it. And um, it is something that you just add to your toolbox. So if they're starting to get a bit more itchy, the skin is uh, weeping or um, is irritated, then having a dilute bleach bath once or twice a week can help decrease that bacterial load, which may be the cause of that um, increased itchiness, inflammation. Fantastic. Um, when when they're in the bleach bath, does it sting their skin? Because obviously you're saying when it can get a bit weepy or a bit red and raw, does you know are, are people going to expect that they're going to their child is going to sting their skin, or is it going to soothe? So uh, because it's a, a lot often families say you know ask that question you know will it hurt my child's skin? That's the reason we have um, the recipes for uh, mixing the bleach. So, so for the first bleach, it's usually the first bleach on the page, it's one mil of bleach for every litre of water. So first you've got to do some work around how to mix it up. But um, a lot of children with eczema, just getting in the water will sting their skin, just plain water. And we often hear that. Um, and so from what, from what I've heard, I've actually had a bleach bath myself, but my skin wasn't really, really inflamed. So I... It didn't hurt my skin at all. But for some of the children that I see, they're able to communicate how it feels for them. They have said that doesn't hurt their skin. In fact, they actually quite like the feel of the water with the bleach in it. Um, but for those that do, where the skin is a bit sore when they get into the bath, any bath, whether it's got bleach or not, you know, sometimes we recommend to put the moisturiser on or whatever you're using to clean the skin on first and then pop them in because that provides a bit of a barrier. And often if it's stinging, they're probably they're probably quite itchy anyway, which is the reason that they're um they've got sore skin when they get into the bath or shower. Yeah. yeah. What um what age? Like how young is too young to be having these bleach baths? What age are we recommending here? Um so we don't really have an age group, but sometimes if child, if we've got some little ones that are ha really having problems with inflammation, we will suggest bleach, bleach baths at home. Um, but um, usually over what I don't like to say age, but over one, I generally will 
if they're still having problems, I would recommend that they start them. But we have been known to um, give the information to children younger than that. Yeah. 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 And I guess I guess when you're looking at those under ones, they're not really down and out and about like those over ones yeah, who are all of a sudden running, climbing, walking and you know, yeah. being able to pick up more gyms in their environment. Yeah. We've had some six month olds that have yeah, have got just got had bad skin and it's really hard to to control. So we've recommended that they try it and see if that helps. It's something they could try. But Obviously, we could just continue to reiterate to bath your child every day. Yes, yeah, just, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Um, what I was going to say is some children, or particularly babies, they get the eczema on the face and on the head. Um, so what, what were you doing in terms of the bleach bathing? Because I would hate people to, you know, be thinking that that might be something that would be able to help out there. I mean, are you thinking that they can use a flannel to to wipe down yeah. on the cheeks or the head. Absolutely. So yeah, if they're putting um, the child the child into the bath, if they sit in the bath and then they use, yes, a clean cloth that they can use use to dab some of the liquid around um, the, the affected areas that cannot be um, put in the bath. So sometimes you could um, hold your baby's head and just you know, just like you would if they, if you were just bathing them normally, is just yeah. use a flannel just to wet with the liquid that from the bath. And you could do that as well. Yeah. Oh, Always be careful that, that it's not going near their mouth. And, and yes. The yeah. yeah, yeah, because we also know do that the you know the kids like to like kind of get the flannel and try and suck it and yeah. but I guess you've yeah. got these you've got these um dilution you've got these recipes for it which we will put up on our Facebook page. Um, yeah and links to where you can go and get that information as well um, for people at home, if you're wondering mm -hmm. about that. And um, we do have a question that's come in. Now, um, can you use steroids before bathing the baby or child who before having a bleach bath? Uh, so uh, I always advocate that the best skin to put, so if your child's got eczema and you're going to apply steroids, Clean, hydrated skin is the best. Uh, yeah, that's when you should put the steroid cream on after it's clean. Uh, and usually we we we, um, we um, prescribe it once a day. So once a day, usually okay. usually around bath time. Yeah. Um, are, are they meaning putting it on but not having a bath? Is that what they mean? No, they were just meaning putting it on before having the bleach bath no but you could put moisturizer on before having a bleach yep. bath if you think it's yep. going to stain your skin yeah yep yep so definitely moisturizer before the bleach bath if, and then if, rinse yeah. off whatever, yeah yeah or whatever um cream you're using to wash your baby in the in the bath in their bath because some people use watches yeah brilliant so for those out there who are watching, if you just want to get in some more questions for us while we've got Fasor here, um, and she'll be able to answer those. How? So you said twice a week for the bleach baths? Yes, that's what we're uh, recommending on the document. Um, yeah, so twice a week just gives the skin a, a, a good clean and then uh, continue with the normal bath the rest of the time or showers, some children will shower. Excellent. Brilliant. Now, let's just get it down. So what's some of your top tips that you may have? Okay. Well, the top tips I have, are, you may have already been covered because um, cause you've heard about moisturisers and um, topical corticosteroids. And one of them I've already said too is that the best time to put your topical corticosteroid on is, is on clean skin, whether they've had a bleach bath or they've had just a normal bath, that is the best time to apply it. Often it's prescribed once a day anyway. So usually bath, topical steroid and moisturise, and then the other times of the day you can just moisturise if needed. Um, I don't know if you've heard this, but um, applying the uh, any creams to skin should always be applied in the direction that the hair grows. 
uh, to prevent irritation of the hair follicles. And sometimes we see children coming in with little uh, pustules that develop, and usually that's around the hair follicle where maybe there's been some rubbing of the cream. So again, applying the creams, but it irritates some hair. Sometimes it irritates the hair follicle, and then it can cause a bit of an infection, and then you get um, inflammation from there. So it can be a lovely time to be applying creams always in the direction that hair grows. And even wow. little babies have small hair follicles that you can see if you use the torch, you can see the little follicles. So even for them, it's in the direction that hair grows. Yeah. Wow, that's, well, that's definitely a new one I've heard. That's awesome. So just looking at those hair follicles and going down, I guess it makes sense if you're yeah. rubbing so in the you, opposite you, way. Yeah. So you're usually um, applying it down. It can be some cultures like to moisturize, like to massage their children, and they usually go uh, in the direction yes. that um, the hair grows as well, you know, leaving oil. So that's the same with the, any creams that are applied to children's skin. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Um, I don't know if Diana talked about it, but using enough topical steroids for the... Um, for the affected area. Yeah. Um, and um, I don't know if she showed the, the document that sort of gives you a guide on how much topical steroid to use for different parts of the body for each age group. But yeah. um, often we find that not using enough topical steroids because people are a wee bit anxious about using it on the skin. Um, but topical steroids is what helps um, decrease the inflammation and helps the skin to start to heal. Yeah, and I did. I did note um, quite often when I would be out, and um, Fano would show me the different creams that they had. That I did notice that the topical steroids always said use sparingly. Yes, and yes. so um, so I guess it really is good to have those conversations if we are wanting to encourage Fano to use a bit more. Yeah, so we always. Um... We always do talk about the top, the fingertip unit, um, and when I see families in my clinic, we will talk about how much to put on, and um, then we give them a plan to go home with and then come back and see me in four weeks just to see how it's been going. But usually one fingertip unit can treat two adult handfuls of body surface area. So it's equivalent. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's really good for you to say it in those, you know, because people know. Wow, yeah, so awesome. one thing, it's, it's an adult fingertip unit, not a child one. Yes. So from the, I don't, did Dr. Peters talk about that? From the, from the pointer finger, the first bend, from there mm -hmm. to the end, that's one fingertip unit, and that's enough to treat two um, adult Four hands. Four hands, wow, no, she didn't talk about that, but thank you for that. That's really good information. That's really helpful. So just that one fingertip, the pointer finger can... Yeah, do two adult hands. That's awesome. Yeah, that, that much yeah. body this area, yeah. Wow. Now, we do have some questions coming in, so that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, how often should I be bathing a 12-week-old with eczema in a, in a moisturiser? Uh, with active eczema every day. So just daily, you're just getting that hydration on the skin? Yeah, daily. It's fine. At least yep. daily, yep. Was, yeah. And, and I guess that's what, um, yeah, what what they discussed on, um, that's what Lydia discussed about just mm -hmm. the moisturizer getting in to do the yeah. work of the skin that the skin can't do by creating it, keeping the moisture mm -hmm. in. Yes, yes, but I, um, yes, I always do say to my families that their, their child should be bathed or showered every day, and I know some families are anxious about. Um, you know, bathing their little babies every day. Um, but if you make sure the environment is warm, if you can, and do it in the time of day when, um, the, you know, the, the it's warmer. Yes. Um, and decrease the drafts and make sure that you've got everything ready, so then, then it, it should it make sure the room is warm, then it is, it is achievable. But I know it's not always, but sometimes timing yeah. is not, yeah. But yeah. Advocate to clean the skin every day, especially if you've got eczema. Yeah. Just because yes. of that, that we talked about. 
Yeah. Talking about heat, actually, we've got another question in here. Heat is my baby's trigger and a warm bath really affects this. Any tips maybe, um, any tips about this, maybe a cooler bath. So, yeah, the heat seems to be triggering the eczema for this um, PP. Okay. Um, so, so that it, oh, I haven't heard that one before, actually. Always um, happens when you're alive, someone throws something at you and you're like, oh, wasn't expecting yeah. that. <laughs> So warm water, you could have tepid, but how if it's just a little baby, you don't probably don't want to be too cold. Or if you do, just a quick bath to clean the skin and then take them out. Um, yeah, I, I have. I'm sorry, I, I I haven't heard that one before. It heat is a trigger. I know heat can be can affect children in the summer. You know, sometimes they can get a bit sweaty and then that irritates the irritation from that irritability makes them more itchy. Mm. Um, but in that case, you could use a cooler bath because it's warmer weather. But in the in the winter, if it depends on probably depends on how much of a trigger it is. Um, because yes. once you put the topical steroids, has the has this does it settle down quite easily after that in the moisturizer. So it would depend on how much of a trigger is and what what actually happens. Do they go? go quite red how long do they stay like that yeah yes and I guess what you said about the heat it can trigger that itch yes the, yeah and the eczema yeah yeah the heat uh sweat can trigger the itch and make an area quite itchy um so if that's the case once they come out of the bath they probably would cool down quite quickly and, the, and, and especially while you're putting on the cream, so that might counteract the, 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 um, the trigger part, especially if you're putting steroids on. Yeah. Because the top thank you will run out all the inflammation, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Does the bleach bathing help with the inflammation? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so cleaning the um, skin with that the antiseptic does decrease the bacteria load. And it is something we use like all over New Zealand, not just for eczema, it's used for skin infections as well because there's higher numbers of those, just general skin infections and people that don't even have eczema. So um, so it does, it, it can decrease the inflammation, yes, because you're decreasing the bacterial load, it's usually the, that's what's triggering the, the increase in inflammation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Um, we do have another question. What are the best fabrics for a baby to wear to prevent more irritation of the skin? Okay, so usually I, um, I advocate 100% cotton. And 100% cotton for babies is, a, is, is achievable because they, they sell them in some of those other stores and they usually stay 100% cotton for the stretch and grows. Um, probably should be changed each day, especially if they've got eczema or if they if it uh, becomes soiled due to bleeding or oozing and stuff. Um, there has been some research around using um, fine merino that it's been tolerated by eczema, but um, and some families do use the fine merino and, and the fit children seem to cope well. But generally, we say 100% cotton because it's breathable and it doesn't have any uh, pilling, so the uh, fabric is quite uh, pure. And then against the skin, is, it, it seems to, um, to um, decrease irritation. And then over that, you could put your warmer clothes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. We do have a follow-up question from the lady um, that had messaged in about the bathing and the heat. Um, so when her Pepe goes into the bath, his eczema just breaks out with the heat. Um, and when he cries and gets wound up, it just breaks out more. Okay, so he gets he quite red. He gets quite red. Yeah. Do, does she think that it's her? Is the eczema quite active? Like that would be because I wonder if it, if, this, if the if it's hurting his skin just getting into the bath. Has she tried putting to? Yes. She tried putting the moisturizer on before he gets into or, or the baby gets into the bath, and to see so if that, that if that if that helps decrease that um, that 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 is having or baby's having. Yeah, yeah. So that that would be good actually. Um, 
for what are the influences for, on all the ears that will go into the bath just adds a, a, a sort of a film to the skin so if he's got some areas that he's been scratching and are irritated they will probably sting it will sting for anybody that's got an open area so um covering it with that just helps to provide a, a film and then when you put them into the bath it doesn't sting so much i mean some of it will depending on how much you've been scratching but that, that might help help decrease his irritation. It sounds like he's just, get, just getting into the yeah. bath. It sounds like it's, it's, you know. Yeah, th mm -hmm. thank you for that because that is some real key information about, yeah, like you said, just any water, not even specifically a bleach bath, can actually hurt when you've got mm -hmm. open active eczema. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. moisturiser just mm -hmm. will help yeah. protect that a bit more. Yes, yes, and that's all you're doing. Sometimes it's easy because we, if we say um, bath your child using the emollient, using the moisturiser, then that for babies it's probably easier to put it on first and then pop them in the bath and then wash it off, whether they've yes. got you know, reactions or not, rather than trying to fiddle around with it in the bath when you're trying to wash the baby and hold them up and all that. Actually, so I think that's a, that's a really good tip that you've given us there about, yeah, mm -hmm covering your pepe um, in the moisturiser before they're even in the bath because you're right, it can be so hard when you're in there trying to yeah, use that yeah, and be slipping yeah. and you're slipping. Because often families say to me, oh, when I say to them, do you do bath or shower them each day? Even for three, four, five-year-olds, they say, oh, no, no, they won't get in the bath every day. It's just such a fight. And the reason they're not getting in the bath is because it's stinging their skin. And if you've ever had open skin like that and you get into a shower or bath, the first thing you're going to feel is pain because it just stings. So, um, yeah, so we often say just lather it on. It's not going to hurt. And, you know, just um, wash off in the bath and at least you're providing some um, some support for the skin as, as you're trying to clean them. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. I think that's brilliant. What an awesome tip that you've given us there. Um, again, we will be having this um, up on our Facebook page. Um, so anyone who's come through um, and have missed any of the beginning stuff that we've talked about, um, you can always go back and watch this chat and the other two um, that have come before us. Now, what other top tip have you got for us there, Fasoa? Um, so I just wanted to remind that um, often the moisturisers come in either a pot, but mo a lot of uh, doctors are uh, prescribing the pump one, but there are children that don't like that, so they prefer the pot one. And we must remember that we don't put our hands in the pot, that we decant what we need out onto a plate or a paper towel, is what I often say, or something that we put aside for the creams. And then you put the pot away and you use what you've de taken out. Uh, just, that's just to decrease the... Uh, con contamination of the pot of uh, moisturiser because if it gets contaminated and then you're putting it on your child's skin then that just increases the bacteria load that we're trying to decrease with the bleach bath so decanting your moisturisers if it's not in a pump bottle Oh, excellent. Oh, thank you for that. That's a really good tip. When they are taking it out of the bottle, um, can they pop it onto like a, a clean bowl or plate um, no, or no. paper towel any, or yeah. just anything yeah anything anything that's a paper towel or a I usually say an old lid from an old um, you know pot of, um, and just use an old spoon or a spoon is probably easier to take the cream out rather than a spatula where it would just slide off so you just using something that they've found that would work and then you put those away each time and you use that each time you're decanting out of the pot yeah Exactly. So yes. Now, if they, if for some reason someone had taken some out into the lid and then they had used it and then there was some left over, are they putting that back into the pot no, or are no. they just discarding that? Okay. Well, if they can't use all of it on the child, they could use it on their own hands to keep those yes. hydrated moisturized or, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But uh, as you do that, you, you eventually work out how much. Um, how much is enough for for you to use? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, thank you for that. Do you have any like with the um, steroids? You said you know one adult 
fingertip was enough for the body surface of two adult hands. Do you have any of those as in terms of how much moisturiser people should be using? No. So the moisturiser, um, we usually say you should use um, as much as you need to cover the whole body because it is acting as the barrier that the skin is not able to do fully itself. So it is, that's really, and also um, keeping the skin moisturised as well because people with eczema don't, their skin doesn't necessarily make enough moisturiser or enough of that lipid layer that they need to keep the, the um, skin barrier strong. Uh, so no, as long as they're using it each day, they're using a clean moisturiser and they're putting it all over, that's fine. Yeah, at least daily, twice a day. Yeah, at least. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. And so you did mention that you yourself has had a bleach bath. Like how how what did how was that for your skin and your and your um healing of your skin and eczema? So um, my eczema is quite well controlled now, but I did have a wee in, inflammation um, on my leg, so that was the reason I had one, and it actually helped it um, heal quite well. Uh, in that it didn't get any worse. Um, I did get out and put some um, cream on it, you know, after, and it slowly healed, but um. Yeah, for an adult, you, you actually do use a lot of water to be able to sit and um, soak properly in, in a bath. So, yeah. Excellent. I don't only do eat it. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't sting. I had an open open area on my leg and it didn't sting or anything like that. It actually, the water feels sort of, um, I don't know how to describe it, but it, it felt different to just normal water. Yes. Excellent. And definitely the smell. The smell is not, yeah. Can, yeah, yeah. Not, not that nice. Yeah. So we will definitely post the links up on um, our Facebook page just to be able to make up those recipes for those bleach baths. Yes. Yep. So we've got all those links there. Um, just another question. Um, we have a lot of people that don't have baths or don't want to have their mm -hmm. pepe in a flexi tub or a baby bath. So what mm -hmm. happens there? Yeah, because you'll probably come across mm -hmm. this question. Yeah, yeah, I do, and yes, there are families, and um, at this stage, we don't have anything else besides having, yeah, so I would just say make sure that if you don't have a bath, then making sure you shower your baby each day, that would be fine. Um, yeah, at this stage, we don't, because usually it involves a bath, yeah, or yeah. the thing, which is what some families will use. Um, yeah, the the concept of the bleach bath is similar to swimming pool because in swimming okay. pools they use, um, you know, they use um, they use chlorine to clean the water because there's so many people using it. Um, yes. After swimming, any children that go swimming after swimming, they should rinse the they rinse their skin with fresh water always to wash off the chlorine or, or the sand or the uh, salt from the sea and then moisturise before they go home because if they leave it and then go home, by the time you get home, they will scratch themselves. That is such a good tip. So if we're taking our pepper swimming or, or to the beach to definitely be able to rinse off, with some water and apply that moisturizer. Yeah. yeah. Often it because as we know, know. Yeah. yeah. They do, yeah, yeah. Um there is another Facebook question that's come through. If using hydrocortisone, can you apply moisturizer immediately after um mm. you've applied the steroid or is there a certain amount of time that they need to wait before putting the moisturizer on the skin? Okay, there's no evidence that um, putting the, the topical steroid on with the moisturiser affects the, the uh, strength of the, the effect of the uh, topical steroid at all. So, no, that, that's not a problem. I mean, often in babies, we actually uh, mix the hydrocortisone with, um, with uh, white salt paraffin. That, that's how we prescribe it, which is easier appearance to apply especially to the face area which which can be quite inflamed or to the body area as well and it, it doesn't affect the effect of the steroid yeah, yeah. so no, yeah. Fine. you can 
do it straight away. Some families actually mix it up you know, if they've got big surface areas to cover. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. And I guess it's nice to get that moisturizer on as soon as you can yes. to protect that skin. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Now, we just, before we go into a summary of your top tips, did you have anything else in there that you wanted to share with us tonight? Uh, just, I uh, think we've covered all of them. Um, uh, no towel sharing, so if, if possible, no towel sharing, and it says that on the Dilute Bleach Bath um, document as well, uh, because the risk of... Um, spreading bacteria from a child with eczema or from a child without eczema to a child with eczema. Often children sometimes can share. So no tell sharing we, we, we advocate. If if families can do that, I know that sometimes that can be uh, difficult, but it's just about decreasing the spreading of bacteria, especially for a child that's got a uh, uh, skin barrier that's affected by eczema. Uh, don't talk about that that's one. Good. In terms of um, the bleach bath and siblings, so if you've got a child who's got eczema and a couple that don't, but you like to just chuck them all in the bath, you know, to have a bath, you're bathing them all together, are the children without eczema okay to go into this bleach bath or are whānau needing mm. to be able to run separate baths? Uh, no, no, that should be fine. The bleach bath should be fine as long as they're not there too long. So uh, ideally it's 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and because after that, your skin actually starts to dry out. Um, and no, just making sure that everyone's rinsed and then, um, and then the child with eczema has their creams put on. That should be okay. Yeah, Excellent. And the no sharing of towels, which is yeah. a really good tip, no sharing of the towels. Um, I guess that would go into the moisturisers and the um, topical steroids as well. If you've got a couple of children that have eczema, you wouldn't share any of those across them either. Ideally not. I mean, some families will, if it's in a pump bottle, some families get a big one and they will share it around. And, and I mean, they know that that does happen. But if you're, yeah, just being careful that the cream uh, integrity is kept clean. So the, yeah, that's the main thing. Uh, if it's not, if it's cream that's not prescribed for the one child and using it for another, then I wouldn't recommend that. It should be prescribed for the specific child. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Brilliant. That's a really good tip. So if you if you're noticing signs on another um, tamariki, yeah. go in and get them seen to yeah. first. Yep. 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 Great tip. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Let me just have a quick look here to make sure that there's anything else that's come in here. Um, no. So was there anything you any other top tips that you had there, or we can just go into a wrap-up of what we've talked about tonight. No, that, that's uh, that's about all the top tips I've got, yes, because I wasn't Excellent. sure if it was covered, so yeah. Yeah, no, I think, oh, I think that's absolutely brilliant. Um, in terms of the the bleach buffing, that was just some really good information about that viral load and what we can normally carry on our skin, and um, which normally doesn't affect any of us because we don't have broken skin from eczema but mm. definitely that information you talked about about once you do have the broken skin that bacteria low can sometimes be very high and it can get in and cause yeah trouble with the eczema yes yeah is um the and you've also said that there were three products that have been tested and proven to be able to use in these bleach baths, um, we will have that up on our website just so people know where they are. And what I absolutely love about this is that um, the poster that comes with it actually tells you where they sell it. Pack and yes. save New World for school. I think that's brilliant because what a way to be able to let people know what to access and where to get it from. So, so yes, so the, it was developed by the network, but those three bleaches are the only ones that we could find in New Zealand that don't have any additives. Yes, that's just pure antiseptic bleach. Yeah, that's yeah. why. Yeah. So nothing else that could irritate the skin. Yes. yes. Brilliant. And for anyone out there, if you um, 
have any other questions after this, um, absolutely go to the links that we are going to pop up on the page. You could also ring our Plunkett line, 0800 933 922. There will be a Plunkett nurse on the other end of the phone to have a discussion with, or go in and see your GP, getting um, your PEPES skin reviewed, and then you can start um, that process of, yeah, are we, you know, is it eczema, and then where to from here? So thank you so much for, for Ips coming on here and sharing with us your experience and your top tips. Wow. Um, I think, we'll, yeah, we'll just wrap that up today. Do you have any final words for us? So I, I just wanted to say, it, I know I understand that eczema is, can be difficult to manage, uh, especially if it's on your little baby, um, but um, you just, you, I know that everyone can do the best they can, but if you're concerned and you're not sure, uh, please go and see your GP, and if you need, then just be referred to your local um, DHB, or they're not DHBs now, but hospitals, and maybe um, see a specialist. Yeah, most special specialists have um, new specialists attached to them as well. Yeah, so you can get that extra support and um, yeah, and then be able to carry on with caring for your baby's skin because our goal is always that your baby will have healthy skin, even um, well managed eczema. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, and thank you for actually talking about that because we do have a fourth instalment in our skin series. Um, so our next one is actually the 19th of September, and that's anxiety and the emotional burden around eczema and having that with our children. Um, and that will be with Dr. Anna Gilmore. Um, and she has an interest with um, eczema and allergies. So that really just ties in with, you know, with that emotional and anxiety that can sometimes happen from, um, you know, when we've got our tamariki with bad skin. And for ourselves too. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you so much for that. Thank you everyone for tuning in today. Um, again, this will be up on the Facebook page and you could also access it on the Plunkett website in the next couple of days. Thank you for coming on and have a good rest of the week.